cataractcoach.com, phaco section in MSICS. So bisect the nucleus and you can use an even smaller incision. So our guest here is Dr. Amos Ravindra from India and watch this technique here. So making a good tunnel length there. Look at that tunnel length starting in the conjunctiva. Now this is not a traditional MSICS incision, but it looks very similar in that it has a nice long tunnel length. So a little tripan blue dye going in to stain it. Look at the tunnel length of the incision starting at the conjunctival part and going into the cornea. That's a nice long tunnel length that'll seal up beautifully. So getting a rexus done here using a cystotome. And you can do a double rexus technique. Here's the first small rexus. Get that capture bag decompressed. And so it's interesting in this case is, yeah, there's no need for phaco. There's the nucleus that rotates automatically. Rotating here is also important to release any pressure from the liquefied cortex that may be behind the nucleus. Now the incision's opened up with a wider blade, probably about a, maybe four millimeter blade. And now a little bit more of tunneling and making a funnel-shaped incision, a trapezoidal-shaped incision. So now it's looking a lot more like an MSICS incision. So that looks great. And you can notice you don't have to have such a large incision. Now, I is being done, or cortex removal being done with that Simcoe cannula. And that's just to really decompress the caps or bag, make sure there's no more force in there. And now the rexus, it can be enlarged. So now you can make a normal size capsular rexus, fill the eye with viscoelastic if you need to. Again, again, aspirate out as much of that lens liquefied cortex as you can, because if you flatten out that anterior lens capsule, it'll be a lot easier to get the rexus done with a lot of control here. Now, the nice part here, making that smaller incision, is that you're going to be able to place a, more, a wider variety of lenses because you'll be able to control the astigmatism better. So we use some scissors there to nick that lens capsule, and now using the forceps to create a good capsular rexus, about a five millimeter capsular rexus. And you see, because the capsular bag was decompressed, there really is minimal or no risk of that Argentinian flag sign at this point. And so getting the rexus done, good, good five millimeter rexus will allow you to overlap a six millimeter optic very securely. And this patient is actually gonna get a multifocal lens here. So again, by making this incision on the steep axis, which is being done here, and in addition, making the incision on the smaller side, you're able to control the astigmatic outcomes. So I think this patient probably started off with perhaps 0.75 or a diopter with the rule of stigmatism and then, or uh, against the rule of stigmatism. And then now here's the nucleus being brought up out of the capsule bag. Nice technique here using two hands at a time to really just dial the whole nucleus up in the AC. Now, the lens loop underneath it and more viscoelastic on top. That's important to protect that cornea and deepen it to give you working room. Now, using that same cystotome or a bent needle, that nucleus can be scored. So repeatedly scored. The left hand is holding the lens loop to secure the nucleus so it doesn't move around. The right hand is being used with that cystotome or a bent needle to keep scoring that nucleus to cut down and you'll be able to bisect the nucleus completely. And this is obviously a very safe technique. The eye is full of viscoelastic, the anterior chamber is nice and deep, the endothelium has been protected, and there you go, look at that, two separated halves. And now each half can be removed, and look at this technique, using that cystotome to help sandwich it and hold it down, so you don't wanna scrape endothelium, and removing that first half, just like that, easy. More viscoelastic, viscoelastic is always your friend here, right? And then we're going to go ahead and pull that one out of the eye as well. So that looks great. Now cortex is going to be removed using that Simcoe cannula. And so nicely cleaning up all this lens material. And then, again, this is all being done without a phaco machine. So there's no IA probe. You're using a Simcoe cannula, which is a manual way of doing that. And just taking your time here, you can really clean up all that stuff from the caps or bag. It's going to take a little bit more effort. Sometimes these cataracts that are whitish, like this, can have some fibrotic lens changes, but I think most of this stuff should be removed pretty easily. Now the J-shaped Simcoe, which is very interesting. I like that. You can get in that sub-incisional area very nicely. Other options here, if you have a FACO machine at your disposal to do a bimanual IA, may give you a better approach to get all this stuff out. But just with a little bit of patience, it's nice to see that with even simplified instrumentation, you can have a really beautiful result here. So carefully removing all that lens material. And then again, this patient's going to get a 
um, lens that is a multifocal lens. So cleaning that out looks pretty good. So I want to encourage you to think differently. You know, you can do these, these tricks like this phaco section. This has been described previously in the literature decades ago even, but sometimes things kind of go out of flavor. And this is something that I think is a useful technique that we can all keep in our pockets. And if you have a patient who would benefit from this, let's say you had this dense cataract on a weaker endothelium, and you still want to be able to have an incision that didn't induce a tremendous degree of astigmatism, to be able to do it this way is really a nice benefit for the patient. Plus, it really looks like a fantastic and fun surgery. Thanks for watching, and thank you, Dr. Ravindra, for your video.